Now, from WYDC-TV, this is Big Fox News at 10. Good evening, I'm Ann Emanuel. We want to start with meteorologist Alyssa Triplett. She's been following the storm and joins us now with the latest. Alyssa? This expansive winter storm setup did bring a little bit of a warmer side, causing for some icing early on, but we have brought in that transition to snow showers. And even though snow showers are seeing some accumulation rates upwards of an inch per hour, and it is a heavy wet snowfall that can lead to some trees and branches to fall, which could lead to some power outages. And on top of that, there's still a few more inches to accumulate into our Friday forecast. And I'll have more details on that, as well as what's ahead in your weekend forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. Earlier today, our Maggie Hall was out in the snow. She talked to some teachers about their snow day, as well as how people got their snow supplies ready. While it's slowed at the moment, the snow has been steadily falling all day. Most of the schools, if not all in the region, have closed their doors due to the snowstorm. I spoke with Natalie Powers, who is having her first snow day teaching in a classroom. I would always get excited for snow days. As a kid, as a teacher, it's so much better, especially because the kids have been so excited about winter break, and it's, it's been a little bit chaotic. With RSV, flu, and COVID cases on the rise, school nurse Stephanie Manning is using the snow day as a time to recharge. It's nice to have a little bit of downtime to kind of recollect. It also gives students a chance to rest and spend time at home. And I think also for the kiddos, you know, you can just look, go to the CDC website and see that, uh, you know, all of those respiratory viruses are on the rise. And so, and we're seeing that here in this area. Today, they can stay home, they can rest up, they can um, focus on, you know, making sure that they're washing their hands and drinking their water and, you know, just having some comfort measures at home. Jean from Wade's Hardware in Addison told me that people have been coming in the past couple days to get their snowstorm supplies. Jean said that the day of snowstorms, like today, business slows down and they normally only sell a couple bags of rock salt or ice melt. Stay safe out there tonight on those icy roads. Maggie Hall, Big Fox News. Our Josh Feldberg joins us now, and as the snow continues to fall, he tells us what the city of Elmira is doing to help the community. In an effort to keep people safe during the first major snowfall of the season, the city of Elmira is offering services to the community. In order to help plow crews clear the snow off the streets, the city is offering free overnight parking at the Centertown Garage. Roads can be very dangerous during snowstorms, and by removing cars off the streets, plow crews can more effectively clear the roads to help avoid crashes. All vehicles that park in the garage need to be removed by 7 p.m. on Friday. Catholic Charities in Elmira has begun their Code Blue Nights resource. This program is a way to help the city's homeless population on cold weather nights. A warming station has been set up in the same building as the Elmira Community Kitchen and will give those in need a place to stay. Both the Elmira police and fire chiefs are asking that you please stay off the roads unless absolutely necessary. If you do need to be on the roads, go slow and take your time. Josh Feldberg, Big Fox News, Elmira. And while we are dealing with a massive winter storm, the southern United States was hit with devastating severe weather. This is video from Louisiana. It shows a tornado cutting through the state, causing mass destruction. The storm killed a young boy and his mother. Their home was destroyed. It's reported that at least 20 people were taken to the hospital over critical injuries. We'll have more coverage of the winter weather coming up in a few minutes with your complete forecast. But now we want to turn our attention to a deadly shooting in Rochester. Police are still investigating after five people were shot in the city on Tuesday night. It happened on the city's east side. The victims are between the ages of 18 and 30. One of them was pronounced dead at the hospital. Three were expected to survive and one was in critical condition. Police have not arrested anyone but say there is no threat to the community. Congress is cracking down on TikTok. The Senate just passed a bill to ban the social media app from government devices over concerns of its ties to China. And now some states are moving to do the same thing, including the state of New York. Doug Luzader has more. How often does everyone in the Senate agree on anything? This was a unanimous vote here to address the threat TikTok may represent to national security. I'm new to Texas, but I'm voting. My first time voting. TikTok's viral videos range from politics to culture and everything in between. 
But all of that data is going somewhere. I think that's a national security concern. And I think even a greater concern that's not gotten the, the level of attention is the ability TikTok as a potential propaganda device. And as we saw just yesterday, that concern is bipartisan, with the Senate agreeing to ban the app when it comes to government devices. And TikTok says their data is secure, but the company's ties to China are creating more concerns. If this ban goes on to pass the House, it heads to the president. And the White House has been very careful talking about TikTok. Generally speaking, the Biden administration is focused on ch on challenge of certain of certain countries, uh, including chi China, seeking to leverage digital technologies and America's data in ways that present unacceptable national s security risk. A federal ban on TikTok would follow the lead of the military and a number of states that have passed similar restrictions. And Florida Republican Senator Marco Rubio would go a step further and push for a nationwide ban. Some people would say to me, well, what do we care if the Chinese government has access to the, the data on the phone of a 16-year-old teenager somewhere in America? Uh, it's not about the 16-year-old teenager. It's about millions of 16-year-olds, 17-year-olds, 30-year-olds, people that are on there dumping all kinds of data that the government of China gets access to. And according to the Wall Street Journal, TikTok is the most popular app in the world, and it's used by two-thirds of teenagers here in the U.S. In Washington, Doug Luzader, Fox News. The House passes a short-term spending bill to avoid a government shutdown. Wednesday's vote is a one-week Band-Aid that keeps the government funded through next Friday. But it gives lawmakers more time to work on the full $1.7 trillion package that will cover the full fiscal year. The bill passed by a 224 to 201 vote, mostly along party lines. House Republicans largely oppose a long extension, instead calling for a short-term fix through the first quarter of next year, when they will have a majority in the chamber. Ahead, we'll go back to meteorologist Alyssa Triplett for another look at our forecast. Plus this. With animal shelters overcrowded, some say the holiday season is the perfect time to adopt a pet. I'm Lauren Blanchard in Washington. More on that and what to consider before gifting a pet present. Here's your local stock market update from Big Fox. Your Twin Tiers forecast from Big Fox. Well, the winter effects were felt even early this morning. We started off with some freezing rain, and then throughout the day, you can see that we started to see that snowfall accumulation on those grassy spots. Still some wet roadways, but we did note that the snowfall rates have started to pick up as after sunset is when we really started to see that snowfall bring in several waves. So we do remain underneath this winter storm warning. Now, around about 6 o'clock, some of the preliminary snowfall reports across the local area were upwards of about an inch to about 3 inches as you run from Bath over towards Bay. Binghamton. So a good dosing at least through that 6 p.m. time frame. But again, we continue to watch these snowfall rates still show that even through early tomorrow morning, we could have times of that one inch per hour. And it is that heavy wet snowfall. So one that makes it difficult to travel through makes for good snowball fights and snowmen. But it is going to cause that heavy that heavy wet snow could lead to trees and branches to break off, could lead to power outages, potentials, as well as make for a pretty difficult pickup as well. One not only only just for our shoveling, but for the plows as well. So make sure to give those plows extra time and maybe take shoveling in increments if you have to do that entire driveway. Now the total storm totals are looking to be about four to eight inches farther off to the east that you go up to 12 inches possible. And note that again, the morning did already bring that one to four inches through at least that 6 p.m. time frame. And we'll see that additional about one to four inches possible here as we step through the overnight. As you'll see, as we look at the snowfall potential, Heaviest of the snow does remain off to the east of Almira with even Binghamton looking at another about six inches. Locally, we're talking about two to four inches possible for additional snowfall. So still some snow to work with and wake up with to battle as you step out the door early in the morning. So starting at about 1 a.m., you can see most of the heaviest is working its way out. But there still could be some of those banding features there you see with some higher reflectivities bringing some higher snowfall rates through at least the mid-morning before we'll start to see those snow showers diminish as we head into Friday afternoon. 
afternoon. However, we will see the war a low pressure system work its way into the Great Lakes, which is going to set up a lake effect snow event for portions of Lake Erie and Ontario, which could send some wintry mix and some snow showers through the Finger Lakes. So we'll keep an eye on that potential throughout our weekend forecast. Temperature wise, we will look at staying fairly steady. We are working into a cooler weather pattern, which will keep us near or even slightly below average with about 35 for a high temperature on Friday, allowing for really that heavy wet snow when we see temperatures around this threshold. We'll see some returning sunshine there on Saturday again, some snow showers up through the Finger Lakes due to that lake effect snow event setting up late on Saturday. Temperature wise, though, still into those mid 30s. We hold around those mid to low 30s through that Monday forecast with uh, some chances for those flurries and some wintry mix. Lake effect snow will be shut off. The low will work through the area, bringing us some snow showers through Wednesday. And then we watch a big cool down that will be occurring as we step towards the holiday forecast. Elon Musk dumps more Tesla shares. Dollar General tries to reach a new audience and it's almost time to play in the Super Nintendo world. CJ Papa has today's business briefs. Tesla CEO Elon Musk unloading about 22 million shares of his electric vehicle company worth approximately $3.6 billion. The move comes just one month after Musk's sale of $4 billion in Tesla stock. And earlier this year, he sold a $15 billion stake in the company to help finance his Twitter takeover. Dollar General is betting on its new brick and mortar retail concept called Pop Shelf. The stores, mostly located in the suburbs, sell items at $5 or less to appeal to customers stretched thin by inflation. The CEO of Dollar General says Pop Shelf aims to attract shoppers with an annual income between $50 to $125,000. That's compared to the average income for Dollar General shoppers at 40000 or less. And to all Super Nintendo fans, this is for you. Universal Studios in Hollywood opening the first Super Nintendo World in early 2023. The new theme park will immerse fans in a world featuring Mario, Luigi, Princess Peach, and Bowser, all to be part of the iconic Mushroom Kingdom. Fans will partake in one-of-a-kind experiences filled with Nintendo attractions and dining options coming February 17th. That's business. I'm CJ Papa. New claims for unemployment benefits declined last week by 20,000 to 211,000. Now, though the number of those still receiving benefits rose to 1.67 million, that is the highest reading since February. New unemployment filings have gradually risen from a 54 year low of 166,000. Well, time is simply running out to ship out those gifts for the holidays and shipping companies. Well, they're working around the clock to make sure packages arrive smoothly and on time. Madison Scarpino has more on this from the FedEx Global Operations Center in Memphis, Tennessee. FedEx calls this the nerve center of its airline. It's staffed 24 seven, and this is where meteorologists, aircraft dispatchers, and other specialists do all of the planning for shipments. And there's certainly a lot of planning going on right now during the busiest time of the year. Filled to the brim with packages. These containers are shipped to every U.S. zip code in over 200 countries. FedEx was the original express transportation company, and it's for shipments that are absolutely positively critical, have to be there in a very definitive time period. The FedEx hub in Memphis has 250 flights a day. On average, 2.4 million packages travel through here in a single day. Overall, FedEx expects to ship hundreds of millions of packages during peak holiday season. Peak for FedEx is our Super Bowl. We prepare all year. As soon as peak is over, and that's early in January, we're already planning for that next peak. Maria Bonds has been working at FedEx for 31 years and started her career unloading bulk trucks. In the last nine years, I've been up here in the tower, which is the best view in the hub. Um, up here, we, we do a lot. We get the aircraft in and out without delay as much as we can. And around the holidays, a lot of extra planning and work. But she says it's all worth it. it there's a lot of pride. We are the Santa with the purple tail. We have a little city out here and everyone out here has a role, whether it be the people on the ground, the pilots, the people in the tower, GOC, everyone has a role and everyone takes pride in their role out here. 
to get everyone's packages there. By the time a package arrives at the airport here, it only sticks around for about three hours until it's loaded on a plane and shipped out. In Memphis, Tennessee, Madison Scarpino, Fox News. U.S. health officials have revised the tool to track severe obesity in kids ages 2 to 19. The CDC released updated growth charts today, which extend body mass index to 60. The charts previously stopped at a BMI of 37. BMI is a calculation of age, height, and weight. A child with a BMI of 35 or higher is considered severely obese. Health experts saying the change was needed because in recent decades, obesity in children has nearly quadrupled. The new chart will allow parents and kids to have a better understanding of where they fall on the scale in comparison to other kids their age. Listen to this. Parents are suing the developers of the popular video game Fortnite, claiming their kids are addicted to it. A Canadian Supreme Court judge allowed the class action lawsuit against Epic Games to proceed. The three parents claim the video game is so addictive that their kids don't get enough sleep and don't take good care of their hygiene. According to the lawsuit, one kid played more than 7,000 hours of the game in less than two years. Epic Games says the case is meritless and plan to fight it in court. Stay with us. We'll have more after the break. And of course, we want to leave you with a smile. If you're a fan of the cereal Fruit Loops, then this company has a big treat for you. Brooklyn-based Art Collective Mischief has created its version of the popular cereal and is selling a single giant Fruit Loop for $19.99. It weighs about half a pound or about half a box of the regular cereal. The loop is available on the Big Fruit Loop website, bigfruitloop.com, starting December 19. The color will be chosen at random. I'm Harriet Wallace. Thanks for watching.